Hello guys, my name is Abdu and today we're going to continue to work on the bow which we had modeled the last time in the previous video. Now if you haven't seen that video, the link is in the description below. And today we're going to be texturing the bow, the arrow, as well as rigging the string so that when we pull backward with one of the controllers, the string follows along. So let's get started. Right away I noticed that the arrow is actually a little thin than I want, so I'm just going to go to edit mode, hit scale, shift Y to restrict the uh, scale to the X and Z axis and I'm just going to drag a little bit uh, that's looking better I'll just scale the string as well edit mode then S full scale then shift Z which is going to restrict the scale to the Y and X axis drag a little bit that's looking good um, right away I notice another problem the arrow is actually not as pointy as I want it to be so I'm just going to hit Z to go to the wireframe, select these vertices, hit S for scale, and then zero on the keyboard. That's just going to collapse all the vertices together. It looks like they're all one vertex, but they're actually still several vertices. And to fix that, I'm just going to hit W and remove doubles. And it's going to say remove five vertices which were in there. And you don't want interlacing vertices, that's going to cause you a lot of problems. All right, it looks like everything is fixed. And I'm just gonna join the string and the bow into one mesh. And for that to happen quickly, I'm just gonna change the pivot point of both objects to be from median point to active element. And now we have the pivot point to be in the center of the bow. Both the string and the bow are selected. Hit Control J on the keyboard. It's gonna make it into one mesh. And the pivot point is still on the bow. Um, another problem we notice is because of the subdivision modifier is applied to the entire mesh, it's also been applied to the string, and it's making this deformation, which are easily fixed. I'm just going to do a loop cut on the top and bottom. So, just going to hit Control R for a loop cut, position it upwards. Let's go to the wireframe mode, position that loop cut way up. And then position another loop cut way down and that should take care of the problem from uh, deformation of the subdivision. I'm just going to apply the subdivision modifier and the polishing of the model is basically done. Next we're going to be doing the texturing and for that to happen we need to do a UV unwrapping. UV unwrapping is basically telling Blender how we're going to wrap the 2D images around the 3D object. A simple metaphor for that is, imagine you have a 2D piece of cloth that you want to wrap around the different sections of the bow. You're going to wrap it around then stitch it in an area. And that's exactly the same thing we're going to do. We're going to wrap around a 2D image, for example this texture of wood right here. We're going to wrap it around one of the sections, for example this upper section of the bow. And for that to happen correctly, we need to define seams to Blender. What seams are, they're basically ways for us to tell Blender where to make the stitching of the 2D image after it's done wrapping it around the 3D model. So we're going to select the edges around the model and define them as seams. And before we do that, we can cut our work in half by deleting the bottom half of the bow, defining the seams on the upper half, and then we're just going to mirror down the entire model along the z-axis and it will cut our work in half. I'm not going to do that right now, I'm just going to first define the seam points. So let's go back to edit mode and then make the loop selections around the edges where we want our seams to be. Just going to keep hitting alt and shift to make loop selections around these edges. And next I'm just going to go back to wireframe mode and then hit C which is the circle selection. And then I'm just going to subtract. Before we do that, make sure you hold shift and then drag and it's going to subtract from this, the current selection. I'm just going to subtract the outer edges and leave the inner edges. And by the way, you can change the diameter of the circle by your mouse wheel. So I'm just going to continue to subtract the selections so that the right side of each loop selection remains selected. Make sure you're always holding shift to subtract. I'm just going to add another loop selection from the string. And then I'm just going to hit Ctrl E and say Mark Scene. And if you go back to edit mode and deselect everything, you're going to see 
that the edges we selected before are marked as seams are actually colored in orange, which is Blender's way of telling you these are seams for your 2D textures. Now, in games in general, you'd want your seams to be in areas where they are least visible. So, for example, in this case right here, I could have selected this edge and marked it as seam instead of the front because the front side or the back side of the bow is actually more visible to the player than the front side. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it as it is right now. So let's go back and add the mirror modifier and select the Z axis as the mirroring axis. And we notice a problem. It's not a big problem, it's just Blender is not mirroring the way we want. If you look at the pivot point, it's actually rotated. We can fix that by going to object mode and hitting control A and select rotation and that's going to reset the rotation of the pivot point. Now the mirroring is working nicely. I just seem to see a few mistakes in there. Just enable clipped in and then just drag these vertices down a little bit and they're going to stick to the other vertices. Now we're going to um, apply the mirror modifier and do the same thing we did before. Just going to select everything, hit W, remove doubles. And it's just going to remove the double vertices so that we don't have any interlacing vertices. And now we look at the seams, they're all looking nicely done. And that basically cut the work in half for us. Next, I'm just going to change to the, the interface to the UV editing interface. And we can see our 3D model on the right, and on the left we see a 2D plane, and that's for our uh, UV textures. I'm just going to create a test texture, set it to a color grid, hit OK, and that's just going to create a color grid for us. Uh, to see that, we select everything, hit U, and then select Unwrap. And now we've done the unwrapping for us. To be able to see the texture on the 3D model, let's go down to Shading and then just uh, check texture solid and as you can see whatever texture we had on the left is actually applied to our 3d model on the right and that's what we want of course we can change the texture to whatever we like you can see that you can see that for example this 3d section of the model is mapped to this 2d section of the image and that's uv mapping now we can change between the modes but it looks like texture is not the great mode let's go back to solid I'm just going to select this 3D section again, select a vertex of this section and then hit Ctrl L, it's going to select connected. And we look at this, it's called a UV island. If you can see there is a B6 and B4 sections together and on the 2D image they, you see them far apart, which means that this outer perimeter right here is actually the seam which we defined to Blender before. And the image is being stitched across the perimeter. Let's go and select everything and then just Control v which will minimize the stretch of the mapping of the 2D image on the 3D model. And then I'm just going to select everything again and hit Control p and that's just going to pack the UV islands for us again. And now I'm just going to go position these specific islands to their different areas. Just going to select and drag and scale a little bit, rotate around. And in my mind, these islands right here which are positioned in this place are going to have a wooden texture. This one is going to have a fabric texture and then these islands on the left are going to have a metallic texture applied to them. So let me start laying out these islands. That's called UV laying out. Um, select these, bring them to the left a little bit. We're going to have this wooden texture applied to them. You can choose whether you want your islands to be laid out vertically or horizontally depending on the state of your texture. But this one, it doesn't matter too much, so we're just going to keep them as they are. Select these islands, bring them back in the middle. Make sure there is a somewhat of a distance. I'm just going to position these to the left again. Make sure there is enough space in between the islands. And this is not the perfect layout. Usually, if you're serious about laying out this, you would uh, minimize the wasted space around the islands and pack them. Let's delete the image. We said before go to uv and then say export uv layout i'm just going to save it as bow uv layout as a png and save and then go to photoshop i'm just going to import the textures which i had downloaded before from cgtexture.com you can go there and check as a library for textures for use 
I'm just going to lock the UV layout, which is placed on the top conveniently. Disable the visibility of the other layers. I'm going to select the selection tool, then scale the, wood, the wooden texture, and then I'm going to start tiling the wood. And because the wood is seamless, when you're copying, when you're tiling it, it's not going to have any defects and it's actually going to copy perfectly and tile perfectly. So make sure when you download textures, make sure that it says seamless so that you can tile them without a problem. As you can see, no defects in there. I select these layers and merge them together into one layer. And then go back, show the middle texture, scale it up a little bit so that it covers the entire two islands. Position it kind of a... Make sure it's in a good shape. I'm just going to make a selection around it and then create a visibility mask so that only the area was selected is shown. I'm going to do the same thing for the fabric texture, scale down and then tile it up one by one. make as many copies as possible so that to cover the entire um, island which is assigned to the string in our model. Select all the layers, merge them together in one layer, then make a selection and then just hit the visibility. And now we have our UV layout set as we want. Make sure you disable the UV islands layer so that it doesn't get exported and messes up your texture. I'm just going to save this as bow texture diffuse and hit save and save it as a PNG. Let's go back to Blender and you can load that up in the UV layout. I already loaded it so it's apparent in the uh, history but you can click the button open and then just select it from the Windows Explorer. And now we have the UV layout set up and our bow is correctly textured. Let's go rename the different models to bow and arrow so that they're easily identified. We're going to do the same thing for the arrow. Define a seam for it. For that to happen, go to the back, the arrow, and then select the two vertices and hit J. It's just going to create an edge for us, which we can then alt click and then it's going to make a loop selection and then mark seam, then hit U and wrap, go back to UV editing. Um, if it's not loaded, I'm just gonna load it again, the image we, which we had recently exported from Photoshop, our texture. Make sure the island of the arrow is correctly set inside the wooden part. And then we have our arrow textured as well. All right, let's look in nice. Now let's get to the rigging part of the entire bow. Let's hide the arrow. Object mode, make sure the 3D cursor where we're going to add our object is correctly centered in the bow and then just shift A, select armature, single bone, I'm going to add it, rotate it and scale it and that's going to be our bone which we will use to rig this string so that when it's dragged by any controller, for example the HTC Vive controller, it's going to get bent backwards as a real string. Now make sure the bow gets selected first and then and then the bone second and then hit control P and say with aromatic weights and that's just going to parent the bow to the bone and if we go to pose mode which is a new mode you're going to see a problem. It looks like the weighting, it's called the vertex weighting to the bone are not set correctly. You can see that the red areas are the ones affected by the bone while the blue areas are the ones not affected. We can paint with a weight that's set to 1 to add areas or a weight set to 0 to remove areas affected by the bone. But we can do that more efficiently by changing the vertex group assigned to the bone. And if you hit select, you're going to see that the vertex group set to the bone is this vertex which is getting affected by the bone. And we want to fix that easily. Just go to go select everything and then just hit remove. 
and if you select again you see that the vertex group is empty it has no vertices in it I'm gonna select these middle vertices and just say assign and the weight paint looks nice and then just go to pose mode and try it out if you drag backwards it seems that the bone is actually affecting the string exactly like we want I can see that the string is a little bit being uh, deformed in a weird way we can fix that by uh, rotating this top edge of the string select these vertices rotate them and then just position them somewhere around here at an angle so that when the string gets um, moved backwards or pulled backwards the deformation of the mesh is at minimal and next if we drag it backwards the deformation is minimal so we are ready to import this into unity there is a slight problem which we will notice very quickly in unity but I, I mean to do that so that you can pay attention to it next time it happens to you I'm gonna save that as rigged and you can import your uh, blender project directly inside unity assuming you have blender installed of course so I'm just gonna import that and if you don't want to import your uh, blender project you can actually just go to blender and say file export and then choose FBX and make sure from this list you just choose armature and mesh and nothing else um, so that only the bow and the bones get exported and hit export if you want then you can import the FBX in here same thing I'm just gonna drag and drop this model to our scene and I'm gonna notice I'm gonna try the bone to see to quickly see the problem we talked about so I'm just gonna select armature bone and then I'm gonna drag the bone backwards and here's the problem the bone is actually dragging the entire bow obviously that's not what we want let's go back open the blender project file and we can fix that easily by assigning a parent bone to the current bone select the bone go to edit mode shift a to add another bone and then scale it and position it go to object mode select the mesh select the bones and then control P with automatic weights that's just going to add another vertex group to our vertices and of course it messed up our previous setup so we're going to fix it by making sure only the middle vertices are assigned to the smaller bone and everything else except those vertices are assigned to the parent bone and then we're going to go to edit mode select the smaller bone and then afterwards select the bigger bone and say control P select keep connected that's going to parent the smaller bone to the bigger bone and if you go to pose mode if we select the smaller bone it's affecting the string but if we're selecting the bigger bone it's affecting the entire bow and that's what we want let's go back to unity and test that out just gonna delete the previous setup um, make sure you delete that from the hierarchy as well re-import go and import the blender file I'm just gonna open the armature and you're gonna notice a new bone is inside so now if I drag the bone which is assigned to the string it's actually correctly manipulating the string like we want great next thing we want to do is import the texture which we had created before let's go to materials import new asset and import the texture file which we created in Photoshop then go to the material drag the texture into the albedo file and you can see that the UV mapping is there everything is set up correctly just like we did see it in blender and we reached the end of the tutorial i'm considering adding a bonus part to this tutorial series by creating an ik chain that goes along the bow which will allow the bow to bend when you drag the string backwards also i'm considering adding details to the mesh by applying a subdivision surface and then just making it smooth and then baking the high details from the high poly mesh to the low poly mesh using normal maps um, basically taking this model to the next level making it more suitable to the higher end type of games let me know in the comments Comments if you want to see that and also let me know in the comments what else you guys want to see and if you like this tutorial if you have any specific feedback or you want us to go through different material just let us know in your opinions thank you again for watching see you on the next tutorial it's been Abdo over and out